Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we have right here the M1 MacBook Air, the M1 MacBook Pro, and the 16 inch Intel Beast Developer Choice MacBook Pro that I'm currently using for development. The Air is actually winning. I'm turning off air conditioning. The simulator is up and running on the Air. The app is launched on the Pro. So the Air won, the 16 inch came second, and the 13 inch Pro, for some reason, maybe it's because it's stuck in the middle with airflow. Actually, why is the Pro? Okay, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna restart my systems and launch a more powerful Xcode project with C++ in it. It's a, ooh, the Pro, and then the Air. The Pro is winning, the 16 inch are slightly behind the show. Three, two, one, go. Go, iPod Touch Simulator is about to be run. The Pro second, so this is twice that the Air has beaten the Pro, and last but not least, the 16 inch are just ever so slightly behind. Now that we've tested out a bit of iOS, I think it's only fair that we jump into Android. Poof. 16 inch are straight away has launched, followed by the Air, followed by the Pro. On the 16 inch has been done. The i9 has completed the task in 41 seconds. So let's see how much slower the M1 is at compiling C++ code. Now, of course, the fact that it's keeping pace with an eight core i9 beast of a CPU is pretty impressive. And the air is done. It took one minute and two seconds and the Pro is done one minute and nine seconds. So we're getting about a 30% performance negligence on the M1 chips. So settings wise, I'm going with high at 1600p, so we're getting right there. 39 frames a second on the air. Um, it's a bit buggy. What's getting on there? For some reason, he keeps running backwards. Oh, so, whew, did you see that? There was a bit of issues with this keyboard. It had the S key pressed down when I let it go. Hopefully that was just a one-off. And again, 38 frames a second. We are still getting up to 70 frames a second, between 55 and 70 frames a second. So I guess the 16 inch is about 30% faster as well compared to these guys. And this game, this game isn't even optimized for ARM yet. It's running on Intel. So when Epic decide, if hopefully they do, decide to release a version of Fortnite that is dedicated to ARM, these guys should perform the same or better than the 16 inch. Go, go. Go, start. We are three and a half minutes into this. The fan noise of the 16 inch is going mental. 14 nanometers versus five nanometers. And you can see that five nanometers is a lot cooler. Now this is intense because we're at 95%. 16 inch is about to launch the editor. Okay, the 16 inch has now launched. We're in the editor right now. It's compiling shaders, 20,000 and a half shaders to go. The pro is behind, the air is behind. All right, nine minutes, 15 seconds. The Pro has now launched. The editor is up on the screen. So the Air was around 45 seconds slower than the Pro 13 inch. So we can see here that the CPU is getting hammered on all of the processors and the GPU is also around 50%. On the M1s, you get eight cores and eight threads. On the Intels, you get 16 threads. It's using hyper threading technology, which is a bit insecure in today's world. It's always getting hacked and all that kind of stuff. So probably eight simple cores makes more sense to me from a security standoff. Performance wise, we're getting around 250% under editor on all of them. And the rest of it is just shader compilation work. We can see that there's four instances of shader compiler on the air and four instances on the Pro here. But on the Pro 16, we've got eight instances because it thinks it has twice as many cores. In memory, we can see that the Air is using 6.8 gigabytes of memory. The Pro is using 6.8 also, and the Pro 16 inch is using 26.7 gigabytes of memory. And most of it is in cache files. You've got five gigabytes worth in cache. These guys, they only have around one gigabyte wide memory, which is the memory that is needed to be required. It's only two gigabytes here, two gigabytes there, and three gigabytes on the Pro 16 inch. Compressed, we're getting one gigabyte and one gigabyte on all of them. And the swap, the amount of the swap used is three and a half here, five and a half on the Pro, and pretty much nothing used on the Pro 16 inch. So I'd say if you can get more RAM to avoid the swap getting hit, I'd get 16 gigabytes instead of eight. So the air, I can see it's going around 42 degrees. The Pro 13 inch is going around 
43.8 right now, 43.5, and the Pro 16 inch are 44, 42 and a half, 43. So I say the maximum of active cooling, they're definitely going hotter than the air. I'm guessing Apple have clocked down the air because it doesn't have the active cooling. 45 minutes to go, and this room is a bit of a furnace, so I've just quickly made myself a, a nice tea to cool myself down. Mm. 46 minutes now. The Pro 16 inch, it's, it's almost gonna finish compiling. 46 minutes to compile the shaders and launch this level. We are now one hour and six minutes into this test. Wow. <laughs> like, subscribe, share, all that kind of nonsense. One hour and seven minutes and it's done. Lap. So it's 21 minutes slower to launch Unreal Engine for the first time in this demo project than the 16 inch MacBook Pro. That's all right. I was expecting it to be slower, considering this is a five, five nanometer CPU. It's doing <laughs> what's it, what's it? Rosetta 2 translation from Intel to ARM. That's a, I'm gonna give it a little round of applause. Of course, uh, the air, that's 10,000 shaders to go. I'm estimating this will take another half an hour, just given its performance. All right, what I'm launching now is a less intensive project. The infiltrator demo that's made for playstations that's made for pcs that's made for windows this guy however is the action rpg that one's made for mobile phones four minutes and 40 seconds in the editor has launched on the pro 16 inch and this is interesting look at that right there on the screen the air has launched faster than the pro we're getting 60 frames a second super smooth this one we're getting 30 frames a second and this guy the pro 16 inch it's 16 frames a second is whew, I think the CPU is so strong that it's taking power away from the GPU that's why it's going a bit slower than the other guys all right there you have it the 16 inch is up and running that was done in three minutes and 20 seconds next how much slower is the air or pro going to be all right the pro has now launched five minutes in so that makes it one and half minutes slower than a Pro 16 inch. Last but not least, the air should be coming very soon. And boom, five minutes and 40 seconds. So as soon as Unity released their ARM version of this editor, I have a, this, this 16 inch has become obsolete. It's becoming obsolete, I can't believe it. And on the air, we're getting around 200 to 250 frames a second. On the Pro, we're getting 180 to 230 frames a second. And on the Pro 16 inch, we're getting 270 to 300 frames a second is variable. You're not gonna tell the difference on this demo. Let's run around. Seems pretty cool, pretty fun to play. 170 frames a second over here, 230. 150 frames a second, 160 frames a second. Unity 3D works really well on this guy. This is, this is, this is, this is amazing. I'm very, very impressed. And this guy is fan noisy. I guess as a developer, I'd still, I'm still gonna use the 16 inch as my daily because I need it and I don't wanna go through the pains of the issues that you're gonna get with this guy. There's gonna be issues, I don't like that. But if I was new to the market and I'm after a 13 inch, the question is do I get the 10th gen Intel 13 inch or do I get the M1 13 inch? And that one, that one's, uh, that one's a harder choice to decide on. All right, so I now have TensorFlow's installed on these systems. I got the latest Apple cooked version of TensorFlow, which is optimized for M1 on these two Macs. And I have the latest version of TensorFlow regular two point on this 16 inch MacBook Pro. I'm gonna be doing auto encoding neural networks. This is a data set of 60,000, three, two, one, go, go. All right, they're all going. Now, something interesting, the 16 inch, I can already hear core wine. There's some serious static noise coming out of this 16 incher car wine city, but you can see that it is winning. It's on step 4,000 already, whereas these guys are only on step 2,000. We're done on the 16 incher. However, these guys, they're still behind. So it's 20,000 on the screen. These guys are still on 11,000. So according to Apple, the M1 destroys, destroys all. Look at how much of a performance improvement that's got going from gray all the way down to orange however it looks like uh the 16 inch at least in this example one it was twice as fast at machine learning and both m1s were neck and neck the air and the pro finished 
the machine learning exercise at the same time. So what have we learned today? We learned that these M1s have a good, 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 good potential. There are still some issues with applications until they've been ported over to ARM. Android Studio, you can't launch the emulator. Unreal Engine runs a little bit slow, but it does run and they all do work. And interestingly enough, the M1s, they don't use hyper threading, which means you don't necessarily need as much RAM as you would have on the hyper threaded Intel CPUs, for example. Unreal Engine, when it was compiling shaders, it had eight processes. Normally you need two gigabytes per process to have a nice healthy compilation time. Whereas on the M1s, because it's half the amount of processes, because it uses eight cores instead of 16 cores, you don't need as much, you don't need as much memory. That's not to say that 16 gigabytes won't help you out. Me personally, while I am very impressed with these M1s, I probably will just go for a Mac mini for development reasons it is cheaper and it's the fastest running and i do have an external monitor that i'll just debunk my applications and whether i replace my 16 inch with one of these smaller ones i will probably stick to my 16 inch fan noise ce included and just wait until apple release a new new 16 inch that's probably the one to get and uh if i was buying a new 13 inch i'd definitely consider these m1s over the intel cpus there is going to be more bugs with these M1s. You won't be able to run Windows as well as you can on the Intel ones, but they have so much potential. I'm sure as soon as all the applications are ported over to ARMS, these guys will be flying. Let me know what you guys think out there in the world, and I hope you found this video useful, and of course, enjoyed the show. Wow, handwriting. I'm tired.